In this section, we are going to talk about uh, mark fields for various notes used in serial records. And notes are basically just pieces of information that don't fit into any other of the descriptive elements in your mark record. When you're recording notes, you know, you don't need to go into a whole lot of detail. They should be fairly brief and to the point, but they are a good place to add some information that could be useful to your patrons. With serials, sometimes you'll record notes that um, apply to all of the issues. So that first example, the phrase international poetry quarterly um, appears on all the issues, even though the actual title is Bitterroot. But sometimes with serials, you will want to add a note of something that only applies to certain um, certain issues. You know, something could change across time. So the second example is one a note that reflects this, that from 1995 on, they were issued by, and then there would be the name of an organization that is presumably different than the one that issued it in the beginning. So if you are recording a note that doesn't apply to all issues, do specify which dates it does apply to. One type of note that you might use is the source of title note, and this is one that you should use when the title does not come from the title page. Um, and this would happen probably more frequently with serials than with monographs, for example, because serials don't always have a title page that just has the title on it. You would probably use a cover title or something like that more often than you would for a book. Um, a, a source of title note goes in a 500 field, and both indicators are undefined, and it goes in subfield A, and there's a period at the end. You'll also see description based on notes. Um, this would be when you're not working with the first issue of a serial. You want to let people know what issue you were working with when you created this record. This goes in a 588 field, which also has two undefined indicators. And so you would put the numbering and then the chronology, if it has it, in parentheses after that, and a period at the end. If you have both of these type of notes, the sorts of title note and the description based on, it's generally best practice to combine them into one note rather than using a 500 field and a 588 field. Put them both in a 588 field, 588 field and have um, description based on and the numbering or chronology and then a semicolon and then the source of title with a period at the end. You could also include a latest issue consulted note, um, which would mean that if, you know, even though if you based your description on the earliest one that you have, you would still want to let people know what the latest one that you looked at so that you, they know, you know, how much you've seen in terms of what the changes over time might have been for the serial. So you would put that also in another 588 field um, and then just say latest issue consulted and then whatever the numbering or chronology is on that. Um, you might use a 500 note field, which is just a general note field. You can put basically anything in a 500 field um, for things like letting people know that some issues also have a distinctive theme title in addition to the title that applies overall to every issue of the serial. Or you might occasionally use it for um, things like if an editor changed. Um, generally, you would do this you know, only for an editor that was an editor for a long time, not somebody who did one year, you wouldn't bother putting their name in a record, but if you know somebody edited, like in this example, from whenever it started up to 1993, and then this guy started in 94 and is still doing it, and that's been a significant amount of time, you might want to go ahead and include that in a 500 note. Um, you can also use a 515 field to indicate numbering peculiarities. That's another funny thing about serials, is sometimes people might lose track of the numbering or, you know, switch systems. So, you know, you can use it to say things like, oh, there were a few numbers that were omitted. They skipped from 31 to 37 for who knows what reason. Um, might be things like the publication started with just being numbered as an addition for every year, and then they started calling it the annual report in 1960. So you want to let people know that as well, that from the 11th year on, they called it the annual report in addition to just calling it the 1960 edition. Um, or you can include something like the fact that some volumes lack numbering. If there's just no indication on the item of what number it is, you can put that in your record as well. Just to kind of let people know that there are some peculiarities. Again, with serial records, we're trying to reflect the whole run of the publication rather than just one monograph. 
And lastly, you could include a 550 field to include the name of an issuing body. So again, if you have an organization that you know, isn't technically the publisher, but they are sort of responsible for making this item come out, you can put that in a 550 field. And then as we talked about in the last video, it would be a good idea to include a 710 field for an access point for this organization. So those are some notes that would help you provide some more information in your serial record.